and to feed crabs. <laughs> what? I didn't expect you. Come in. <laughs> So this is where the magic happens. Take a look. It wasn't a long time ago that I was working from a studio where moving basically meant bumping into things. But it feels like ages ago that I started working on this place. New studio. So welcome. The time has finally come. This is the new studio. After a wait, this, after a crazy year uh, where I became a father, I renovated an entire house alongside with the studio. I can finally call this place finished. A multi-purpose room to make music, record videos, practice guitar, enjoy life as it comes, and so much more. I actually moved to this place in the beginning of April, but at the time the place was hardly finished. No desk, no lighting, no acoustic treatment, no storage. So getting all that in order it took a long time, but finally here we are, and I'm super happy with how it turned out. <laughs> So in this video I'd love to show you how this place came to be, the philosophy behind it and how I turned just a random room into my dream studio. So this is how we bought the place, the first time I set food into what now became my studio. But we had to do a lot of work to make it how it is today. So where these cabinets are used to be a chimney. So I don't know about you but I wouldn't feel too comfortable burning a fireplace next to my precious guitars. It was taking up a considerable amount of space from this wall, so it needed to be taken down. It was a lot of work, it was enclosed in the wall, I needed heavy machinery. Take the damn thing down. Oops. Now we've got the entire wall as a usable space. Nice. So probably the most common thing on my previous studio tour was that the entire studio was running on just one socket. It's just, I had to do it. I always made sure it was safe, sure, but I mean, for this studio, I didn't want that. So I had an electrician install new groups and new sockets, but these lines needed to run in the ceiling. So we also had to tear it down. So we're removing the ceiling. Maybe make a, a window in the roof. And then on to the next part. So when I saw that roof construction, an idea popped in my head. So I called it window in the roof. But of course I meant a skylight. So this place always felt a bit dark to me, especially on cloudy days, which happens a lot in Holland. There wasn't a lot of natural light coming in. So I asked the contractor if it was possible to install skylights in this place. Turned out it was, which was, I'm super happy about that. So here you can see they made two huge holes in the concrete roof and put in two big skylights. It really transformed the place from a dull looking place to a room that when you enter it just, just shines a light on you and makes you very happy here. This is what I see every morning when I enter the studio. So, but as a filmmaker, I filmmaker, I shoot videos, whatever. I wanted to have the option to totally darken the place. So with these things, when I close the curtains, let me close them. So now when the skylight is closed, it becomes pitch black in this place. <gasps> wow. Yeah, that's pretty much pitch black. So now I can Mooey. Turn on my own lights. And this way I don't have to worry about the sun or the clouds coming by. I can just set the scene. That's cozy. Ooh. Of course I can also add some different lights. Yeah, it looks good. Kind of digging the sun vibe today, so let's just kill all the lights and just enjoy the sun. So while the skylights open up, let's continue the story with a sad part of this uh, whole thing. It was the floor, because I, I really loved the original floor that was in this place. It was a very dark, stained, old wooden floor, really thick planks. But it was infested with woodworm. So we really had to throw it, the entire floor out, because you, know, you can't have woodworm in your music studio. It'll eat all your instruments, I don't know. But it, it was very bad, which really saddened me, because, yeah, I kind of liked it. But we used... Let me... So we used those same planks, the few ones that weren't infested, to create these window sills. So now we 
with the floor gone, I was thinking of maybe insulating the crawl space. So the only thing we had to do was uh, cut out a big chunk of concrete in the floor so we could fill it with the insulation material. So that's exactly what we did. And now hopefully this place will feel a little bit more comfortable in winter. I don't know yet, but winter is coming. So but actually one of the biggest problems I had in the old studio was noise coming in from outside and noise coming outside from the inside. So these are the windows. I lived to a very busy street. I had neighbors on top, to the left, to the right. I had to stop recording so many videos because halfway something would happen. Probably if you can think of it, it happened to me. So the windows were all single glass. The wood was rotten on some place. So we decided to replace the entire window frame also because it's just way safer and extra thick glass with some foil in between that also stops sound from leaking, I guess. Anyway, I think it does a very good job. Let me just... So I guess, yeah, it works pretty good. <laughs> so next up, the walls were replastered and I painted them red and white. Nice. The place needed a new floor and I went with a nice wooden parquet floor that has a classy but yet timeless appearance and suits the place very well. And that was basically around the time when I moved to this place. So all I had was an empty box and guitars scattered all over the floor. So this place needed more attention to furnish than the old place. The old place was basically full before you even got in. So to come back to the multi-purpose room I want this to be, the two main things we'll be doing here is making music, writing songs, playing guitar, practicing and shooting videos. So on the back of this wall are hanging my main guitars, the one I use the most, ready for grabs and always up for display because guitars are a thing of beauty, aren't they? And I get a lot of people asking if it can damage the guitars or hurt them, but yeah, my philosophy is that, that I want my instruments to be there all the time. I wanna make it as easy for myself as possible to get to work, to have as little barriers as possible to get going. And I truly believe that working like this enables you to play more, work more focused and get more things done. So if you wanna see a video with me demonstrating my main guitars, definitely let me know in the comments, but there's no time for that today. But what I do to keep them comfortable though is to keep the humidity between 40 and 60% all the time uh, with the humidifier. But the climate in Holland is pretty mild, so usually it's pretty much in the sweet spot in my house. Yeah, let's talk about amps. So there are four amps that I regularly use. Let's start with the tube amp section. So to my right is the Tone King Imperial, giving me that lovely Fender Deluxe Reverb kind of sound and that Fender Tweed, more gritty kind of sound. So both really awesome and very usable, I love it. And in the middle, the Hook Wizard. So in short, it has presets, motorized phases, it's giving you that, that Vox tone, that Fender tone, that Marshall tone. It's like everything you want in an amp. And it has a direct out. So it's always plugged in, connected to my PC, ready to go whenever I want. And you can record at bedroom volumes because you can play it without a cabinet. Awesome. And of course the matchless HC30, just a beast of an amp. Tones, loud, juicy, incredibly tasty. Sometimes I use the aux on the matchless, sometimes I use the aux on the Imperial. It just makes recording much easier. So there's one thing I desperately need to solve and that's my pedal situation. I have no pedal board at the time. I have the board, but I, I want something different. Dan, are you watching? The fourth amp is actually over there. So yeah, this is uh, the camper always plugged in directly into the computer. Yes, a Windows PC, which is standing underneath this desk, which is called Platform by Output, which is okay, I guess. On it, we have a sweet analog channel strip by Tegler Audio, which is basically a preamp, EQ, and compressor in one. Perfect for tracking vocals, recording guitars, and basically anything that requires a microphone. Very handy is the keyboard tray where I have my synthesizer and my Ableton push device for looping, composing, arranging, just making music. So it's immediately there when I need it. And when I don't, it's nicely tucked away. So there is a ton of cables going in and out of things, running behind the back, and all of this is connected to the heart of the operation. This RME sound card to which all my amps, mics, and synths are connected. It's there, plugged in, ready to go. <laughs> Plugged in, ready to go. That's the title of this video. Plugged in, ready to go. The reason 
reason it took so long before I could finish this video was that I wanted to experience the place before I settled on things finally. So what is handy, what works, what doesn't. And also a place just needs to grow on you. You can't just design it from scratch and have it function perfectly from day one. At least <laughs> I can't. I wanna live the space, work in it and see what it lacks and what it needs. Oh, and what it definitely needed was acoustic treatment. So if you remember my first video I shot in this place. Get something done about the acoustics. Yeah, that was horrible. Well, that is now fixed with acoustic curtains or whatever, but better yet, these nice RLX acoustic panels on the wall. So these are put in last week and it really made a huge difference. So before these were on the walls, I was literally, literally, literally running around with cushions and blankets to make the place sound okay. But now it's just, it's so much better. The frequencies are way more balanced and there is no ugly reverb anymore. It's nice. So there's a nice comfy couch. Well, not too comfy, but it's nice. And a cabinet to put a few things on display. And stuff I often need in the studio can be tucked away behind these closed doors. Behind the studio is a storage space where I can put all the things I don't regularly use and boxes, cases, microphones, whatever. So at this time, it's still a work in progress, but it's very handy to have the extra space to keep the main studio looking clean. So, the video gear, and I'm sure mostly musicians watching, so I'll keep it short. I've got three main cameras, all in the Sony A7 line with a variety of lenses. Just to give you an idea, this is how much changing just the lens does to the image. This is a 16 millimeter lens. This lens is a 24 millimeter lens. And this is the 85 millimeter lens. Beautiful. I'm at the same spot. And then there's the lens that goes from 24 to 105. <laughs> Pretty cool, right? Vocals are usually recorded directly into the PC using a boom mic I've got over here. A rude boom mic, usually running into the analog channel strip. And when I'm doing more run and gun style, I'm using the sheer mic on top of the camera. So I can just walk around and you still can hear me clearly. So we didn't talk about specific gear too much, but let me know if you're interested in a video about uh, the stuff you must have to make your home studio or bedroom studio come to life. I've got some interesting things to share about that. So I hope this place will inspire me to create more beautiful music, beautiful videos that everyone can enjoy and it will live up to the dream I had when designing this place. And I'm super excited to see what the future will bring. And I just wanted to say thank you all so much for watching my videos and supporting the channel. It means a lot and without you, I wouldn't be here in the first place. So thank you so much. And I really also wanted to stress that you really do not need all of this to get started. As you know, I started my business in a very tiny room that I turned into a little home studio, gradually investing in gear, getting better at my job, increasing my workflow, and little by little after putting in the work, it resulted into this. But don't be fooled, a good idea, a good song, or just let's, we can just call it being creative, doesn't need a whole lot to come to life. It's just when you're busy doing this for so long, it's cool to expand and seeing your dream come to life. But having the dream is always better than getting there. The journey itself is what makes it beautiful. Anyway, thank you so much for tuning in. Thumbs up if you're excited about the new place too. And see you next week. Cheers. Cheers.